Welcome back to the Paddock Show. We're at Croft. We're up in the north of England and the weather is a little bit dull, but the racing is certainly not. All of the formerly for the 750 Motor Club are heading into their penultimate round of the championship, with the exception of one, the Armed Forces Race Challenge, who are having their season finale this weekend. And speaking of them, we took a little walk through their paddock and we spotted a rather cool looking BTCC livery. Um, I believe that's a Mazda MX-5. Hello, chaps. Can we squeeze in? Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't, don't trip over. Don't trip over. Are you the driver of I this am, car? I am, yeah. Unlo unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. It, it looks good, but have, have you done something bad to it? So I believe the timing may have skipped a teeth or the cam angle sensor has gone. Um, I've got a guy who's going to go and pick one up now. Um, but either way, on full throttle, it's popping and banging down the straight. So I've had to back it right off and, yeah, just trying to get it fixed, ready for the race. How was qualifying before the issues happened, or was oh, it playing up from the start? Yeah, literally, as soon as we come out the uh, come out the pits, it was straight away, which is really frustrating because the last race it performed fine, no, no issues at all. So, hopefully, it's electrical, but and we can fix it. Well, silver lining is it means that we've got a beautiful engine opened up for the camera. Do, do you want to talk us through what, what's going on in this car? Uh, yeah, so at the start of the year, um, I had oil starvation, so we, we actually blew the engine. So this is a new donor engine. Um, so I had it all apart, completely stripped, completely rebuilt. Um, so yeah, so it's all refreshed, put back in. Um, so yeah, we've got the rocker cover off at the top. Um, so you can see all the camshafts, um, for those that don't know. Um, but yeah, so at the time built on the front, I'm just double checking, making sure that's within timing. Um, and the VVT's happy, so that's what I'm doing, but yeah. I've realised that I've been really rude and we haven't actually introduced you on camera. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, so I'm Luke Arpino, um, I'm a driver for the RAF. Um, so I've been driving, this is my first year in my own car. Last year I raced for the RF in their own MX-5 Mark III Super Cup car. Um, so yeah, so this is my first delve into, you know, personal ownership and, uh, and all the issues that comes with that. But, uh, but yeah, so yeah, this season's been really good. Um, racing with another MX-5 in this championship, uh, Dougie Inglis. Um, but yeah, really close, good racing, but yeah, yet to beat him yet. Okay, well, maybe once you, you get the engine fixed, a few yeah. extra horsepower yeah. and you'll have him. No, yeah, thank you very much, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> well, good luck with everything and good luck for the race. Thank you. thank you. So it just seems that there are issues going on around everywhere. I know bleeding the brakes isn't necessarily an issue, but I'm going to count it as that. And, OK, we have got to talk to the driver of the 72 car because that is retro. That is an old MG and a half. That is Andy Holmes. Let's see if we can squeeze in. Is Andy about... Andy, come on in, we've got a camera. We, we saw this car and we thought we had to talk to you about it. Well, what do you want to know? Everything. <laughs> uh, right, well, I've had it about 25 years. It's uh, originally was 1977 chassis. Um, I bought it with a V8 in it, um, but obviously upgraded and converted to a road, uh, race car since then. So, so how long did you have it as a road car and then when did you switch it to racing uh, about a month <laughs> I, I bought it with the intention of converting it okay. yeah because I, I used to run standard four cylinder um, and I was ready for an upgrade which is why I bought the V8 version have you always been racing it in the armed forces series or has it done other no, series as well uh, no uh, many years ago so to, it was the early 2000s I ran uh, MG car club BCV8 okay. championship um, that was mainly what I ran the four-cylinder in, then got this out and um, had a few races, but then sort of life, career, everything got in the way, uh, daughter born, etc. So um, it took a back burner and was shoved in a garage for a while, but um, a few years ago, Chris Slater, that's one of the main men in this, I actually took him on his first track day many, many years ago. Uh, bumped into him again and asked me to come out and give him a hand and of course when, once I got to meet some of the old sweats from my days they all talked me into bringing the car back out so a couple of years ago spent the winter trying to sort it out and uh, well, I'm still trying to sort it out and it's either that or me getting a bit old <laughs> it's uh, not been doing quite as well as I was hoped but there's improvements all the time so I'm quite pleased with that side of things. It's hard to go to a race weekend and then not get sucked back in. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And also, because there's a lot of novices in here, particularly, obviously, I'm RAF veteran, so um, I tend to stay with the RAF side of things, but the amount of advice that people keep asking me once they, shall we say, realise my experience, etc., although there's been a bit of a gap. Um, and so I've helped them out sort of on this, and then when the team comes together for things like ROR, um, I'm usually down there and uh, get my hands mucky. In fact, I think the last two years I've been the last one to bed on the Saturday night because I've been trying to fix stuff. <laughs> but uh, no, we're enjoying it, which is the main thing. So, and seeing a bit of improvement each time. And how are you finding Croft House this weekend going for you so far? Uh, so far, it's all right. I mean, I've uh, just upgraded all the brakes on it, so I was a bit cautious, shall we say, in the quality. Um, just to get used to them, because they are a little bit different to how it used to be. Um, a bit smoother. Um, so, but I've been here probably about, must be six or seventh time I've actually been up here to meetings over the last 20, 30 years, nearly enough. So, that's about it. Wonderful stuff. Best of luck then for, for the races today. We'll hope so. Um, usually gets a good start, this, because it's the four litre V8, so it... Uh, Got a load of grunt off the line, so that's where I usually make up most of my places. We'll keep an eye out for you at the start. Thank you. <laughs> well, wonderful to hear from more. 20 years he's been racing. That That is a time and a half. And, well, still going strong. Been in the garage for a while. It's come out of retirement, you could almost say. Um, so we've spoken to the RAF, we've spoken to the Army. I think all that's left now is to have a couple of chats with some of our Navy um, drivers. Was it Marines? Navy Marines. Um, do we have the driver of the 96? It's Ben about. Hello, Ben. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, good. I thought we'd come and have a little chat with you about the clear. Yeah, uh, she's doing all right, I think. Uh, well, I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> How's qualifying? Uh, yeah, all right. We had that. We had the subby service flag out, and it was pretty much the entire way around the track. So the first couple of laps were all right, and after that, it was like see where you can stay on the truck sort of thing. What happened to cause it? Uh, I think there was two different cars putting fluids down. Yeah, so just avoiding that basically for the rest of the qualifying. A little bit of essentially wet weather running? Uh, or worse? Yeah, a little bit worse because you can't tell where it is. <laughs> so what, what got you into racing? How long have you been racing for? Uh, four years now I think it is. Um, yeah, basically track days don't do it anymore so racing it was and how long have you been racing in this clear uh the whole four years okay yeah so one thing i was going to ask how does this kind of fare with the other cars because it's such a wide variety of cars on the grid um i do I'm, so at the minute it's at about 160 brake per ton um which obviously the class is up to 180 so i'm sort of like mid class but it does all right i still still sort of like fight it out with like the top of the class but ideally I could do with either a little bit less weight which I haven't really got anything to lose or some more power but that's money which I've not got <laughs> I've also just having a look tied for second in the championship so very very close oh yeah really close um, yeah I think I was leading it for a little bit and then uh, I had an unfortunate time at Alton Park where I didn't finish a race and then the next I think the next out in Anglesey, I had to start both races from the back of the grid because I qualified out of session. So that sort of like screwed my chances over, but we'll see what happens. Wait, how does one qualify out of session? Uh, so if you don't get your free laps in with the rest of with everyone else, then you can qualify with like someone else that's going around, um, like another championship. But it means that you, your times don't count, basically, and you have to start from the back of the grid. I understood. Well, best of luck then thank for you. this weekend, Ben. Cheers, thank you. Right, now, there is one more car that... I did want to talk about and I'm going to see if we can find it because it is very cool and for some of the old motorsport fans well actually I shouldn't say that but for some of those with good memory anyway they would recognize the livery of this car from an old BTCC championship going all the way back to the 90s back in the days when Jenny Morbidelli would drive uh, I think it was Ricard Rydell um, and my memory is not quite good enough to remember exactly who drove this particularly uh, livery car but it is this one right here it is the number 19 the S60 Volvo David how are you doing how are you doing all right it's very good yeah. not not too bad 
Right, talk us talk to us about this car. So I got this car early part of this year. Um, it was formerly raced in the Armed Forces Race Championship and I've owned it since about April time. This is my second race out this year. Had a few problems with the fuel system earlier this year and absolutely fantastic car. It really is. I'm steadily getting used to the car, used to the track as well and yeah, really, really enjoying it. So you mentioned that you've only done a few races with it. Have you had a lot of racing experience or is this your first season of racing? So this is my second season of racing. I had a Mini Cooper last year, which guy my size is a little bit small. So I've upgraded to this one now to hopefully have a little bit more space in the car. And generally the build quality of it is absolutely fantastic because it was originally built by Volvo Motorsport. So I don't have huge amounts of experience, but steadily getting getting into it. I did about three or four races last year. And then, uh, yeah, this is the second one this year. I was going to say, I was noticing that there was something weird. This is the first time I've had an interview where I've had to look up at someone, so it makes for a nice change. Indeed, yeah. I'm not certainly not a small winner in, by racing driver standards. No, I, I feel the pain because I've got a Kia Picanto and my head's going up against the ceiling, so I can only imagine what it's like for you in a Mini. Yeah, the Mini was a little bit small. This one is interesting because it's got the roll cage inside, so I still can't get the seat quite as far back as I'd like, but those are for some future modifications I think we'll be doing to it at some point. So have you been to Croft before then? I haven't. I came yesterday for the practice session, threw the car around for a couple of sessions yesterday and really got into it and it was an absolutely fantastic track. Some of the quick um, curves for the Jim Clark S's and then into Sunny at the end of it. Brilliant, brilliant fun. I love it. From Sweden to Germany, Volvos to BMWs, we had a chat with some of our BMW CCR drivers. This is your second season. You've done Sports 1000 and now you've moved to... Oh, Road Sports and now you've moved to... Um, BMW CCR. What made you first of all go into road sports and then switch to the BMWs? Well, that's a long story. Um, I previously raced kits, um, okay. so that that's where I, I've been in the 750 racing kits for, for numerous years. Uh, took a bit of a sabbatical. There was uh, they were trying to run a, a roadster series a, a few probably 12 years ago. I bought a BMW to sit in that roadster series. Um, unfortunately that, that fell by the wayside so I've now got a 60-70% prepared car and nowhere to race it Yeah. so um, I built it up we stuck it in road sports just so I could get a 45 minute seat time, get myself back in the groove um, it wasn't competitive in class B um, in, in that group so it was like right, well, I'm not here just to make up the numbers yeah and then the BMW club looked at that and it had fit some of the regs. A little bit of tweaking, it's dropped into M2. And, you know, it, it's not the quickest thing out there, but we're, we're near the sharp end. So, yeah. and, and it's racing with other vehicles of, of comparable performance. You, you raise your game, you, that's where the, real, the race craft comes in. And, you know, it's, it's more fun. Instead of watching the mirrors in road sports, waiting for yeah. the monster cars to come through, you know, uh, but, but that's that's how it is. No, absolutely. Final question, um, and then I'll get out uh, of your way. So, with setups, oh, sorry, actually no, not setups. You mentioned that you had an incident in race one. First yeah. of all, what happened, and what's the plan now for race two? Uh, right, what happened is uh, went for a, a move on on Aidan into Clairvaux. Um, he, I, he, I thought he knew it well. I was there, but you know, maybe not. He, 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 anyway, racing, matter. racing yeah, incident. Racing. But um, he survived. I ended up turning round and reversing into the gravel at Clairvaux. Once you're in there, it, it's beached. You know, you, you're not getting out. So, safety car, quick snatch out of the gravel, and and racing continues. I've got a lot of work now. Uh, damage the rim, uh, suspension set up. So we've got a lot of cleaning up and a lot of work to do. Um, hopefully, touch wood, make it out for race two. Uh, if it passes scrutineering, because they've got to check it out again. Um, but plum last, so I'm starting from the back. Um, we'll we'll see what we can do. You know, I'm not I'm not going to win the M2 championship this year. I knew that after missing the first four rounds and a DNF at Alton. Obviously, this I'll get two points today for starting race one. We'll see what we can do. Make sure the car's all right. Hopefully, it, there's there's no serious damage, and we'll uh, regroup at Silverstone after the Burkitt and see what we can do there. One BMW series to another.
It was the 116s and the 120s this weekend who had the luxury of the pit boxes. Well, there's one car that is nearly sideways, which is a 116. It is the number 89 car. I don't know who is at the wheel of it. So let's go in and see if we can find a driver. Who drives this car? Do you want to come out and have a chat? It's got a lo lovely ice cream as well. Especially to see all the different types of cars. Hello, Freddy. Hello, hello. Hello, Freddy. I tried to do it with the mic, but it's it. So, first off, uh, how's the ice cream? Very much the, uh, good, to be fair. Vanilla's better than raspberry ripple. But yeah, it's, it's good. No, I, I, I can't do a raspberry ripple. No, it's not the same, is it? It's not the same. Keep it original. So, you're in the 89. Are you just racing in the endurance or are you doing the championship? No, we're doing as well? it all. We're doing it all. Uh, missed the first three rounds of the championship, so we're not in contention. Um, and those that are as lightnings ahead, they're quick. Um, so they're just here for a bit of fun, really. Um, Dad, the old man at the back, he's got a coupe. Um, it is Snetterton. That was his first time on a circuit racing in 42 years. So he's come back to it. And not quite as fast as what he used to be, but he's, uh, he's, we're just here having a laugh, basically. So, so, importantly, you are quicker than Dad? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And, and he's got 50 more horsepower or whatever a coupe is. 60 more horsepower, but yeah, it's bragging rights over a Sunday dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Good to hear. So, have you been to Croft before then? Uh, last year, with the trophy. Um, yeah, love it. Brilliant circuit. I think the cars, the trophy cars especially, really suited here. Don't know why it's fast, but it just seems to work. And good fun. Good fun. Hopefully the rain stays off. So what were the other two rounds that you did then this season? Uh, so Snetterton, last round, and Anglesey. OK, Ang Anglesey's a, a fun one, isn't it? Yeah, good fun. Uh, we're doing Race Remembrance this year as well, um, which that'll be third year on the bounce now with VMS. Um, but it's fantastic. Again, the circuit out there is brilliant. I like a bit more undulation. Cadwell's my local circuit, so okay. up and down, it's a bit more, a bit more involved. So you mentioned that there's been a bit of history with you racing and your dad as well. Where, where have you come from? What did you race before? Uh, me, I've been all sorts really. Uh, PBMW Championship was where I started with the old E30s. Uh, then the Compact Cup. Uh, then life took over with the kids. Uh, so yeah, come back to racing. For the 116 from the start was in its inaugural season. Here we are, is it five years later? Um, so yeah. Dad's, um, Dad's been missing for 42 years, so he's got some stories. He, uh, yeah, I think the last car he raced was a Mazda RX3. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a baptism of fire for him. But, well, I'm going to eat my ice Yeah, I was about to say, it's starting to leak all over the place. Thank you very much, Freddie. Well, yeah, cheers. Well, Ice cream in September. You know what? I'm one of those people who will have an ice cream at any point of the year. It could be minus five degrees. I will have that ice cream. There are some really funky liveried cars here. I want to see if we can have a chat with the 232, which is Bacon Walton. Um, let's squeeze in. Hello, chaps. Is the driver of this car about? Do you want to join us for a chat then? <laughs> Come on out. I'm kind of walking around. I don't know who I'm bumping into. So okay. do you want to introduce yourself for the camera? I'm Luke Fox and I drive the 121. The one behind this one. How's the season going so far? Yeah, good first season. Steady away. Um, could be better, could be worse. So. First season, what got you into racing? Did, have you done any karting or anything else before? Done karting um, and then just dabbling cars. Um, and then we did a, a cheap banger race, endurance race okay. with a friend. And he's like, let's go proper racing. So we bought this. Um, so who did you say that you were racing with? Uh, AJ Duffel. So are you just doing the endurances or no, are you doing sprints doing as well? Sprints today, yeah. Share the car. Ah, okay, right. So one each. So who's going out first then? AJ. So what happens if he bins it? Uh, we fix it. <laughs> we fix it. In time for race two? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Budget if we need to. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you very much for your time and best Thank of you. luck today. Take care. I do like that when you've got two drivers who are sharing a car and there is always a little worry. Just please don't bid it before my race because I've got to go out as well. Um, let's have... A little gander, we'll have a chat with Waring, who I think is actually doing quite well in the championship. I forget his first name. So I'll see if I can drag someone out. Hello, chaps. Are you the driver of the car? Oh, has he? Oh. Yeah, because we had a chat with him, I think, at Cadwell. 
Snetterton, Snetterton, more recent. We might drop back in a little bit then and we'll continue our walk. Who shall we find? So this is the issue when we come through the paddock. Sometimes we just don't find drivers, but we've got to our last set of garages. Um, I'm going to see if I can get the driver of uh, the 59. Is the driver of this car about? Hello, hello. We'll get you out into the light so the camera can see you better. Not too bad. What's your name? It's Rob Carvel. So I'm driving a BMW 120 Trophy car today. Are you driving in just the endurance or are you doing the sprints as well this weekend? Uh, just the sprints today. So the 120 class is only applied to the sprint races. So two races later on this afternoon. So the 120, if I'm not mistaken, made its uh, kind of debut as a, a series this year? That's right, yeah. Well, it had a, a start a couple of years ago, and what we've got now is a better set of bits to convert the cars, and we're proving out that the, the concept works, and it really does. The car's absolutely fantastic around here especially. So now we're happy the car and the concept works. We're, we have a lot of people interested in building cars, and we're moving forwards. So, how do you find the kind of comparison with the 116s? How does it vary between circuits and particularly here at Croft? Well, Croft's a, a great place to answer that question. So, Croft's, you can really stretch the legs of an engine here. And the, and, and the car not only has more power, but a lot more grip. And the combination makes it a much more challenging car to drive and more, much more rewarding because it, it's such a fantastic circuit. So we, all in all, I'm really enjoying it here today. Well, that's fantastic to hear. How much racing have you done prior to this season then? Well, um, I guess it's 26 years now I've been racing. So over the years, we've raced most front-wheel drive formula and rear-wheel drive. So what we've found is that the BMW series, the 116 and 120 series, are really well run. And everyone's very uh, close, close-knit community but extremely well, uh, extremely competitive as well, which is a really good balance. It's got a bit of everything. Well, you've certainly been around. How have you done in qualifying? Uh, we've, we've done well. We've, we're at P2 on the grid in the first session. Fantastic. And pole for the second session, which means pole for the second race. Well, best of luck converting those later on today and tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you soon. Cheers. Right, and that brings an end to our grid walk in the BMW 116s and the 120s. We have a lot of interesting cars and drivers out this weekend, and we found an automatic MR2. We've bumped into Maxine Nichols, one of the drivers in the MR2s. Maxine, how are you doing? Not bad, personally. Myself, I'm doing great. The race season, not so great. Um, I don't know if it's been mentioned at all in the um, commentary or whatever, but I've had an SMT gearbox put in this year so that I can use paddle controls, and it's made a massive difference to my um, to my race positions. I'm right at the back with all the newbies, so that's always fun. I was going to say, this season you've picked up some decent points, but I've noticed that something happened in Silverstone Race 2. What, what went on? Silverstone Race 2? Ah, yeah, um... I was coming down the hangar straight and um, somebody came across onto me. We ended up in the clerks, actually. So someone came across literally on the straight and um, came into me and just popped my tyre and everything. So I didn't finish the race. I tried to finish, but I didn't realise I had a burst tyre. But of course, I didn't get very far with that. So, yeah, I didn't finish. Well, that's unfortunate. But here at Croft, is this one of the circuits that you particularly like or kind of impartial to? I've done really well here. Um, but like I said, the, the race season, I'm at least two seconds off my normal pace. Um, so from going from sort of like 15 to 20 on the grid, I'm finding myself way further back. Um, but with testing, I did manage to knock like two seconds off um, by the end of the day. But still, I'm t still two seconds behind because I was, I was initially four or five seconds off. So I'm just hoping for the best. We've, we've had a little issue with the starts. Having this gearbox, we haven't been able to launch properly on the starts. Um, so they've done something, changed the ECU to a five-speed gearbox, and apparently it's going to help me. So we have had a little practice in the, the paddock quietly. And, um, yeah, fingers crossed it's actually going to launch off the line. So hopefully I won't. I'm, I was losing sort of four, five, six positions off the, off the start and then trying to claw them back all the way through the race with a car that's already slower was, was an issue. So 
Talk to us a little bit about the changes to the gearbox. What, has, what changes are they? What changes does it make for you as a driver? Okay, so it's the SMT, which is the paddle shifts. Well, it's normally the gear, the gear stick, but I've had it done into paddles. And it's because I'm sort of... My disability that I've got is getting worse as I get older. Um, so although I was doing well with my race results before, sometimes I'd miss a gear change or the gear change would be a bit slow because I was using my legs. Um, obviously, I now just use my right leg for the, the gas and the brake. Um, but it's known that they're not as competitive, the SMT gearbox is. Um, but obviously, my car got written off at Anglesey last year, and it was kind of a point where, right, you need a new car built. What do you do? Do you just give in and go to the SMT? So we've given it a go. Um, we need to try and find some weight out of it because I'm allowed a little bit lighter, but at the moment it's way heavier than the normal Mark 3s out there. Um, so I'm fighting a few battles. We've almost taken the disability off me and given it to the car. So um, it's just perseverance, really, and just seeing what we can do with it and hope to God that it becomes competitive. Um, I think a little bit of it is me because I'm not doing so well off the start. So mentally it's, it's affecting me as well. So it's just working together. I think I need to get some coaching in next year because I haven't had a coach for a few years. Um, but just hanging in there, even if I come off in tears, I'm still back in the next race. Um, but the frustration is definitely, definitely there. Well, I think you're being a bit hard on yourself. I think, all things considered, you're doing a really good job this season. Yeah, but it's difficult when you, you sort of progress in. The, my best season, I think, was 2021. Right. Um, and ironically, that was the year I lost my dad um, through motor racing. Um, so... It's kind of like we did so well and now I'm comparing everything to that. But obviously I've just got to be... Everyone's saying to me, you do amazing with what you deal with anyway. But it's kind of like, yeah, but I was struggling before with my legs, but I was doing better. Yeah. And it's kind of like, obviously we spent all this money getting this one done. To go back to that, it's kind of throwing it down the drain. But it is what it is and I love being out here and the paddock's amazing and Rogue are brilliant. And yeah, it's just, it's my happy place really. So I just have to grin and bear the results sometimes. Well, Maxine, it's been a pleasure talking to you and best of luck today. Thank you very much. Have a great day, guys. Enough of the sports cars. Let's move on to the open wheelers. These F1000 car, cars are the quickest cars, really, in the 750 Motor Club, running with slick tyres, the downforce. No other car really gets anywhere near the pace that these cars do. So it's always a real pleasure to be able to watch them racing. We've got, uh, well an opened up F1000 car. So I thought, just just a quick question, what's going on over here? Um, well, we've just had some clutch problems. So we're uh, we're trying to sort them out and make sure everything's running all right, ready for the race this afternoon. How's qualifying gone? Uh, not great. Um, we're seventh, which we've all we did was bolt the new tyres on and we managed to lose a second from where we were yesterday. So we're uh, we're struggling a bit, but we'll uh, I'm sure we'll find it eventually. Well, good luck with fixing the car and good luck with the race. Thank you very much. It is really cool once you take the bodywork off the car, just how much you can actually see and just how, also how little there is on the car. We've also got a little bit of work going on over here. Some of the cars being cleaned up and that is, I'm just gonna double check my notes. That is the number 24 of Bert Chapman. Um, is Bert about? No. Okay, can we quickly ask, we won't distract you for long, what are you doing to the car? Uh, we've just had to repair the drive shaft cup and the uh, housing that goes into the bearing let go so yeah it's just a bit of a repair job what did Bert do um, nothing really it wasn't particularly uh, anything that Bert did but the um, the drive went basically in the diff so we've just had to repair all the all the uh, output and what have you from the diff to the to the drive shaft so well good luck with repairing everything and good luck as well for Bert thank you no, oh Bert's just shown up hello Bert how's it going yeah I'm good how are you getting on yeah not too bad we're just having a walk around having a chat How's qualifying gone? Uh, it was okay. So qualified 12th. Uh, I had a bit of an issue, so I couldn't uh, find sixth gear. Um, so to be honest, though, at Croft, uh, Max in fifth out isn't the end of the world, but uh, did okay. Um, got three, uh, three laps disallowed, though, unfortunately. So uh, track limits out of the S's. Um, nearly, nearly died going through there as well. Massive save. Um, so yeah, I came in, heart was going a bit fast, but yeah, no, feeling good for the race. Uh, definitely, I was a second off my um, pace yesterday. So uh, yeah, I got definitely got time in it, and um, race pace is usually better. 
We've been speaking to a few of the drivers, and I think um, oh, they've just gone now, but they were also mentioning that they were a second off where they were yesterday. Is that track conditions mainly coming into effect or something else? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, we, we do think it was track conditions. So at the beginning of the session of quali, uh, it was definitely slower than towards the end. So I don't know whether it's just the cloud, a bit greasy maybe. Um, it's definitely spitting at points. So um, maybe temperature as well being a bit earlier than sort of the, I think it was third session. So mi mid afternoon yesterday uh, when we were getting our fastest time. So probably is, is track conditions, yeah. And, you were, and, and the new tyres, right? Everyone's out on those. So yeah, I think some of them are thinking of putting older ones on. Fair enough. And a final question, how long have you been racing in the F1000 Championship? Uh, so nearly, well, it's just been over one calendar year now. So I started June last year. Uh, started in June, it was actually at Croft. Uh, it was my first race last year. So uh, this is my eighth race weekend now um, in total. I've done all of it with 750 and one with Monoposto, which was at Silverstone at the GP layout, at uh, the GP circuit. Um, and yeah, it was the first car I've raced actually. So yeah, it's quite new to it. Definitely throwing yourself in the deep end then. Absolutely, these things are ridiculous, especially around a crazy track like Croft. They are just so quick, it's so bumpy here, it's just constant turns, there's no brake. Uh, yeah, my back's killing me already. <laughs> yeah, whenever I speak to drivers, even the Formula V drivers, they mention that this circuit is so, so physical. Yeah, it's nuts. I mean, you're just looking at going through that first chicane, it's, you know, 90, 95 miles an hour in these. Um, the back section, the S's, you're looking at, you're going through, you're shifting up from fifth to sixth, mid S whilst trying to turn with one hand um, and then that fi that section going into sunny in sunny out you're coming into a braking zone at like 135 whilst braking turning in like it's, it's just nuts yeah trying to get all of that in a car this quick um, yeah it's pretty crazy well thank you very much for your time and best of luck with the race this weekend yeah pleasure thanks guys take care so we'll continue to work our way down very good to be able to hear from Bert Chapman and yeah, I mean, a lot of work going on with quite a few of the F1000 cars. You can open up the car so easily that I think probably sometimes they just change things if they ever feel a need to. Whereas if you're racing on some of the BMWs or road going cars, there's a lot more effort to be able to take things apart. And probably you're a little bit less wanting to uh, change things or have to check things just because of how much extra time it does take. So. Uh, we've pretty much got to the end of the F1000 paddock. Let's have a chat with Chaz Hyten. Um, is Chaz about? Um, oh, I doubt it. Has he gone on a runner? Rob Willems, eh? Okay, we'll have a chat with Rob then. <laughs> Unlucky, Rob. <laughs> You've been thrown on, under the bus a bit here. Yeah, a little bit, but it's all right. You'll have to excuse the hoodie because I've got a helmet here and it don't look good right now. Yeah, definitely. Mrs. might see it or something. Yeah, yeah, she's back at home, but yeah, she yeah. might see it later on. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to keep it light. Uh, how's qualifying gone? Yeah, quality was all right. We um, we went out for, I think, four, lap, four or five laps in the end. Um, put it on pole for a little bit um, and then came in because I saw, saw on the visor it was getting a bit, um, a bit more heavy with the rain, so came in. Um, Looked at, the, looked at the times and then I think Craig went out towards the end and the track conditions just obviously improved um, and I think he's pulled it but we're still second so it's all still all to play for and it's, it's a hard track to race this, it's very much like Snetterton um, with the toe um, so hopefully it'll be a close race and we won't have too many cars involved but it probably will end up like that. Now I'm looking at the championship standings and that tells me there's two points between you two, yeah. so incredibly tight. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been tight I think all year round. We, me and Craig have been quite lucky with keeping reliable which is the main thing keeping consistent keeping the points up which that's all it really comes down to but to be honest i've not really been looking at the championship it it can all be decided today tomorrow or like when we go to donny so i sort of keep to myself and i just do what i have to do keep the car on the track and um, keep it going around and keep the points up really Absolutely, and obviously there are some circuits, you know, you go to Silverstone, Donington, lots of overtaking opportunities. What's it like here at Croft? Because I'm guessing it's not as difficult as somewhere like Cadwell, but... Yeah. Uh, no, it's all right. Like, um, overtaking's not a problem around here. Certain places you have to be obviously careful with. It is high-breaking er or high-breaking zone, so you just have to pr trust the person next to you and um, the, the person, obviously, that you're overtaking, that they're not going to turn in that, and that they've seen you. So it is doable to overtake, and it does produce um, good racing. Final question to end this on a light note. Custard creams or jammy dodgers? Oh, jammy dodger. I like the sound of that. Thank you very much, That's Rob. All right, no
and with that we will bring our F1000 paddock walk to a close. Always great to catch up with the faster 750 formula, but we are moving on to the Calm All Porsche Trophy. I mean, come on, who wouldn't want to walk through a paddock of Porsches? As you might guess, there are loads of Porsches, and we've got some pretty cool old, I'd almost dare I say, retro style Porsches. So let's try to find a couple of drivers so that we can have a chat to them. And this number 40 is um, pushing out a little bit of smoke, so let's have a chat with them and figure out what's, what's going on. Hello guys, what's going on over here? Um, so in the in Park Permit after our qualifying session, uh, basically the cap on for the cooling reservoir wasn't fit properly. So we basically had like a reverse pressure effect where instead of being sucked through the engine, it shot a lot of coolant out through the top of the cap and we lost the load. So essentially what we're doing now is just clearing any air that would have been in the system from that. So are you the driver or just mechanicking? Uh, we're just mechanicking. Uh, James is off, I think he's getting Mackie somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the drivers these days, they just don't care, do they? Uh, well, I mean, he's off, he trusts us, we've been working with him for a couple of years now, so if he's going to go get us food, we might as well make sure his car's working. Oh, if he's, if he's getting you food, then it's okay? Oh, exactly, yeah. That's perfect. How has qualifying gone apart from that issue? Yeah, very well, actually. Uh, full day of testing yesterday really helped us kind of gauge a good time for the track. Uh, we were, ended up third in the SP2 class, so the second class of this championship, which was basically our target, which is really nice. Uh, sitting P6 on the grid as well. So in and amongst the fast guys, which should help get away clean and just avoid any like midfield collisions. Perfect. Thank you very much and good luck with getting everything sorted. Thank you very much. Always good to have a, a chat with a couple of the mechanics as well. And I mean, I think our timing was absolutely impeccable that we walked by just as it started smoking. Um, there's a, a couple of really cool retro cars over there, but those aren't being raced. So we'll have a chat with um, some of the, the Boxsters or Carreras. I always get Porsche models completely mixed up. Hello, excuse me, are you a driver? I'm not a driver, unfortunately. Do you know where we could find a driver? Yes, I do. Oh, can you source one for us? Thank you. Sorry, sorry to drag you out of your, your comfortable motorhome. How's it going? Very good, thanks. Very good. What is your name? John Walker. John. Hello, John. How's qualifying gone? Um, pretty good. Um, P2 in class, P4 overall. Um, sounds like it's going to be a good race because the guy that I'm next to on the second row were separated by um, a few hundredths of a second. So it bodes well for a good race. Fantastic. W which one of these is yours then? I'm the red car. The blue one's my son's. That's a class one car. Mine's a class two. Okay. So who's quicker out of you and your son? Um, age has not uh, helped. So I think that gives you the answer. See, I thought you were going to say something like, oh, we can't really tell because one of us is in class one, the other's in class two. But well, he tried my car yesterday and was a second a lap quicker than me in testing as well. I think that might be just because he's lighter or something. I, I, do you know what? That's it. And I think I had some freak weather going on when I was out. Exactly. Gusts of wind going into corners unsettles the car, right? That's it. They're very sensitive to that. So you've qualified in, in third. Uh, no, sorry, fourth? Uh, fourth overall. Second people. in class. Second in class. And where's your son qualified? Uh, he's on pole. Oh, OK. No pressure. <laughs> well, um, the, car, the car was here um, three weeks ago in the um, Porsche Club Championship, and he had a bit of a nightmare weekend with um, various problems. We've got them all sorted, so it's all fresh in his mind from racing here three weeks ago, so he's in a good position. So what happens at the race? Like you're going into turn one, you see your son right in front of you. Do, do you just go a bit more hesitant? He'll be gone by the time I get there. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much and good luck for the race. Cheers. Right, we'll continue our way down the pit lane and probably have one more chat before we bring this uh, grid walk to a close. So these are all of the Charles Ivy racing cars and they run all of the cars to a really, really high standard. As you had two of them on the front two rows of the grid overall as well. That's not just in class and I believe it's four different classes for the um, Porsche All Calm Trophy. Uh, let's have a chat with the ADX Racing Team car. Um, this is, I can't see any numbers, that's standing in the bonnet as well. How are you doing? Not too bad. What's going on with the car? Um, 
<laughs> you tell them. Uh, we think there's uh, uh, an electrical, uh, bad electrical connection on the top of the fuel pump, which is underneath the battery. So we've got to get the top of the, the, uh, the, the casing off, check the connection, and hopefully fix the problem. But it's only got about 20 minutes to do it. That's not a lot of time. We'll get out of your hair then, because it sounds like you're very busy. All right, thanks very much. See, that's, I feel like that's a balance, right? You see something going wrong, you have a quick ask of what's happening. If it's serious, leave them alone. It's always great to see the motorsport community helping each other out. We spoke to a family-run team in the Type R Trophy who had a bit of an adventure getting to Croft this weekend. With Adam and Andrew Parker, hello to both of you. We thought we'd sit you down, have a little chat, and Andrew, I'll go to you first and then I'll come to Adam. We hear that it's been a bit of a monumental weekend so far. Yeah, we've had a few issues. Uh, first of all, we had a van breakdown on the way here, so we had to get recovery back home. And then, um, then what we had to do is get some of our fellow race competitors, our teammates. Uh, they all came to our house, they collected all our stuff, and we got all our stuff here on time. It was fine. Well, a little bit late, but you've managed to get it all here. Adam, does that add to the nerves of a weekend, or is it just all still the same? Um, I don't really get too nervous about going on track. You've, how many times you've done it, I'm more um, enjoyed by it and want to go on more eager. So, yeah. And we were looking through your results. You had what was a pretty epic race win, uh, not race win, podium at Anglesey. Was it win? Anglesey, oh, third. Third, third. Uh, you had a really good podium at Anglesey, and it was raining as well. Yeah, um, so I started on pole and pretty much just tried to gap out and hold it. Uh, the two top two in the championship managed to catch up and pass me, but uh, everyone else managed to hold off for the entire race and come back in third. And Andrew, you were mentioning before that Adam's just very good in the wet. Where's that skill come from, do you think? Well, I think that came from the time when we were go-karting. So uh, many years ago, we used to race at Teesside, uh, which isn't too far from here. It's quite a, a local track. Uh, and whenever it, whenever it was wet, uh, which was a lot, by the way, uh, we tended to do quite well. And any trips to Warden Law as well? Because I know it really rains over there. <laughs> do you know we never raced there, did we? No. Uh, we did a lot of them, but we never raced in that one. So how long ago then were you karting and how recently did you move into cars? Uh, so this is my fourth year in cars now, it's quite a while ago, I started in junior saloon cars quite a while ago, so four years ago probably, weren't it? Yes, our fourth season. Um, and I did two years of karting then, so yeah. And how have you found that change from, from karts to cars? Because obviously it's completely different racing with suspension and not, you know, chucking it into every corner. So yeah, you have to focus more on the exit and a bit less on the entrance in car and you just throw it in, try and get through the corner as fast as you can and worry about the exit after. In cars you have to more focus on how you're going to do the corner, how you're going to get out of the corner as quick as possible and get a good look run down the straight. So, season's been going relatively well so far. Are, are you kind of happy with how things have panned out and what's the aim for the, the final couple of rounds of this season? Well, uh, we've, we've had quite a bit of uh, bad luck with engines, so we're on our third race engine uh, for the season, which is, is suboptimal. Um, and we've, but despite that, we've done a couple of top tens, haven't we? We've done three or four top tens, something like that, which is, is brilliant. We're dead pleased with. And is a plan to be staying in the Type R's for the foreseeable future, or do you have some other <laughs> series on in, in your eyes? Um, I personally would like to stay in Type R for another year and try and make my way up the leaderboard and try and get higher up to, uh, and see if I can get into possibly Top 5 more often. Yeah, I mean, that'd be great, but a lot of it's sponsorship and funding dependent because it, it it's, it's difficult for us to achieve this, you know, given the resources that we've got. But, yeah, we'd absolutely love to have another go at this, wouldn't we? So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, Adam. You've done racing in cars now for a few years in Type R and in saloons. I want you to rank out your favourite circuits. So, number one, Cadwell Park. Definitely my favourite. Uh, if you've had Twisty and Twined, it is. It's more about the driver and less about the engine power in the car. So, that's definitely my favourite. And then, second is probably the angle seeing the rain. That is very fun to do, and I enjoy that track. Uh, after that, I'd say Donington. And then, Silverstone. I but not Croft. <laughs> no. No, why not Croft? Most people tend to really like Croft, but I've spoken to a few people in the Civic paddock and they seem to absolutely despise it. Um, so the back, the back portion of the track, so just after the S's, 
is of very high speed and only just staying on the circuit. So if you run the space like too much off like the Mr. Apex, you're pretty much in the barrier in these cars. So you wouldn't be a fan of Monaco then? <laughs> I'm a fan of Cadwell, so I don't really know because I've never driven it in real life, but we'll find, I guess we'll see if I ever do it. Fair enough. Adam, Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Well, this has been the Paddock Show at Croft. Thank you very much for tuning in and we hope that you have enjoyed it. The 750 Motor Club will be back in a few weeks' time at Silverstone.